What's going on guys? In this video, I will show you how to make gold Miami Cuban bracelets with a 3D printer and castable resin. I will show you the complete process from getting the 3D designs, to printing the waxes, to casting the links, to assembling the chain, to finishing. I will also share some important information you need to know about making these, and we're also going to talk about how much to sell these for. This is a video you guys don't want to miss, let's get right into it. Before we begin the video, I want to ask you guys for a huge favor, and that's to hit the like button. I know it seems like a small thing, but it's super important for my channel, and it helps grow my channel. So if you guys can do that for me, I would really appreciate it. Thank you in advance. Alright guys, before we begin, you will need a Mars Elgoo 3 3D printer or any other 3D printer of your choice and you will also need castable resin. You will also need a primer to make sure you get consistent and good results without failed prints. You will need an alcohol which is at least 91% or higher. I will have an Amazon link to all of these items in the description under the video. The first thing that we're going to do is get our 3D file. There are many styles of links to choose from. For this example, we're going to go with this file right here. The original file is 8mm, but that's okay, there aren't any holes or prongs in these links, so we can resize it to whatever size we want. And the file is going to be the same. So here are the 3d files as you guys can see the file already comes with the gap in the link however this gap is not big enough if we print it like this it's not going to print or cast correctly so i went ahead and edited the file and made a bigger gap now we're going to open up the software that comes with the printer and import all the files count how many links you need to make the bracelet to the length that you want and import those links into ChuDoBox. next we're going to take the usb drive that comes with the printer and plug it into your computer and we're going to open the program that comes on the drive so let's go ahead and import the file click rotate two times to make sure it stands up straight and so right now, this file is 8 millimeters in width. We want this bracelet to be 12 millimeters. So what we're going to do is change the percentage to 150%. 8 multiplied by 1.5 is going to be 12. Now we're going to import the rest of the files for this bracelet and do the same thing. Multiply everything by 1.5. Change all the files to 150%. The next thing we're going to do is apply the primer. This is going to make sure you get flawless prints every single time with no failed prints. Use the yellow plastic spatula to spread it out evenly all over the plate. Make sure you get a nice even coat. Apply a good amount and put it on UV light for about 10 minutes. The next thing that we're going to do is pour resin into our machine. Fill it up about a quarter way and attach the plate. Plug in the USB drive, click print, find the file, click on the play button and the printer will start printing. As you guys can see this file is going to take about 3 hours to print. And now we're going to print all the waxes. Once the wax is printed, cure it in alcohol and the next thing that we're going to do is cut the supports on the lock only. Never clip the sprues that the links are on. The links have to be casted with the sprue and also cut the supports on the clips. Alright guys, let's take a look at our waxes. Here we have the links with the sprue. As you guys can see, it came out perfect. And right here we have the box lock. It also printed perfect and everything's ready to be casted. Now, if you guys are making links that are very tight, I suggest you guys print a couple extra links. Cut them from the sprue and put them together to make sure everything fits properly. A lot of times when designers make these files, they don't make them correctly. So always check this. If you print waxes and they don't fit properly, simply take some sandpaper and sand down the links. If you don't sand it yourself, the polisher will do that and you're going to lose gold and you don't want that. The next thing that we're going to do is cast these links and 10 karat yellow gold. As you guys already know, you should aim to pay around $1.50 above the spot price per gram. Find a caster in your city and bring them the 3D waxes. Also, if you don't live near a jewelry district, you can cast your own gold. You can buy a casting vacuum machine and two ovens. You will buy special investments specifically for this 3D resin and you can go on appmex.com and buy grains of gold. Buy some mixing alloy to mix it with the gold and you can easily cast your own pieces. Just be sure to do this in a safe environment. This is not something you should be doing inside your house. I'm gonna do a whole video on how to cast your own jewelry, so stay tuned. Alright guys, so right here we have everything casted and the first thing that you will notice is the caster didn't cut the sprues all the way. You have to tell them to cut all the way, otherwise the polisher will keep all the extra gold and you will lose money. Let's go ahead and weigh everything. And as you guys see, everything weighs 66.48 grams. The next thing that we're going to do is cut these. You can buy some jewelry cutters on Amazon for around $10. And what we're going to do is cut as close as we can to the link. We're also going to cut some of the gold off the locks and the clips. After that, we're going to file and smooth everything out. Make sure that you guys save the gold dust and the sprues. Later on, we're going to take these to a jewelry refiner. And what a refiner does is separate the metals by melting them. Different metals melt at different temperatures. So we can either get pure gold back or we can get cash back. A refiner is going to give you approximately 98% of the gold price. There's a jewelry refiner in pretty much every single diamond district. All right, guys. So here's what our finished links look like. As you can see, we got rid of all the excess gold and everything is smooth now. Let's weigh everything. And the total weight is 65.35 grams. So we saved about one gram. Now let me show you guys the basics of what a polisher is going to do to make this bracelet. You're going to separate all the closed links from all the open links and we're going to assemble the bracelet. You guys should use special pliers that won't scratch the links. I don't have that, I'm not a bench jeweler. I just want to show you guys how this works so you understand. Get some pliers and put paper, plastic or a towel over them and simply bend the link. It's very easy to do. And then we're going to put two open links on one closed link. After that we're going to close the open links and that's how you assemble a Cuban bracelet. It's very easy. After that, the links are going to be soldered by the polisher and they will be polished. This should cost you around $100. So here we have the finished bracelet and as you guys can see, it looks perfect. 
On the previous example where I made a Cuban chain, the chain was not good quality. The polishing was not great and the chain came out crooked. I want you guys to understand that this jewelry video series is not a TikTok video of me showing off jewelry. It's an educational series. Sometimes I'm going to teach you guys by showing you what you should do and sometimes I'm going to teach you by showing you what you should not do. That chain was done by someone who doesn't specialize in making chains. This bracelet was done by a professional who specializes in making Cuban bracelets and you can definitely see the difference in the work. This bracelet came out pretty much flawless. It hangs straight and even if I try to mess with the links, it goes back to its normal position. Every part of the link was polished correctly, even the insides. Polishing the insides of the link make a huge difference in how the bracelet looks. And the links were soldered so good that I couldn't even find where the gap was. This is how a bracelet should be done. There are people saying that you can't make high quality chains and bracelets with a 3D printer and that's completely not true. You can make very high quality chains and in the next example I'm going to make a very tight chain with fat links just to show you guys. It all has to do with the polisher that's making it. Now let's go ahead and weigh the bracelet. So we originally started with 65.35 grams and now the bracelet weighs 59.79 grams. So we lost 5.56 grams to polishing. If we multiply that by $25 a gram, that's $139 that we lost. So let's run the math. 65.35 multiplied by 26.50 is $1,731 plus $100 for labor, that's $1,831. Let's divide that by 59.79. That means we paid $30.62 per gram to make this bracelet. So we paid $5.62 over spot. Our target price should be around three to three and a half dollars per gram over the spot. Again, to do this, we have several options. You can cast the gold yourself if you can. You can make more chains to get a bigger discount from the polisher. The more chains you make, the more of a discount you will get on the labor. And you can also find a polisher that specializes in making Cuban chains. The polisher will cast, assemble, and polish your chains, and they will charge three to three and a half dollars per gram on top of the spot. But you have to make a lot of pieces to get these wholesale prices. Now let me show you guys how much sellers on eBay are selling these type of bracelets for. This is just one example. So we have this bracelet right here. It's 10 karat gold with a similar weight. Let's see how much the seller charges per gram. The bracelet is eight and a half inches and it's nine millimeters in width. It weighs 53 grams and he's selling it for $2,375. If we divide $2,375 by 53, that's $44.80 per gram. If our bracelet costs $30.33 per gram, that's a 14 and a half gram difference. So $14.50 a gram profit multiplied by the weight of our bracelet, which is $59.73, that's an $866 profit on each bracelet. This seller sold 238 of just this one item. So he made $206,000 on these bracelets. And here's another seller. He sold 1,211 of these. So this just shows you guys the jewelry business is not a side hustle it's a serious business for those of you that are starting a jewelry business i want to know what kind of issues you're running into please let me know in the comments below also i'm going to be launching a memberships group on this channel which is going to have exclusive content private chats and much more so stay tuned for that all right i hope you guys enjoyed the video please hit the like button subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one